What's up everyone, this is Marsman here, and welcome to Marsman Gaming. In this video, we break down the biggest gaming news of the week, and as always, I can't do this alone, I need the Marsman crew along with me. So, to my left is Haki. Hey guys. And to my right is Langella Kill. What's up everyone? Now, we are on episode 6 of the Marsman Gaming Newscasts, and it already feels like it's been like a year. We've been doing these things like quite often, every week we've been... Basically, around, around Thursday, Friday, we always try to record our episodes, and we cover the biggest gaming news of the week. So, obviously, I, things can change, right? There could be a big news topic that happens on the day that we record, and we obviously can't address it right at the very moment because it's a already in recording. So, we'll try to address as much close to the news topics that have occurred up to this point. So, let's just dive right into it. The biggest news topic of the week, and I feel like most of us here... Um, you know, I've seen this was the Nintendo Mini Direct and essentially what ends up happening was on Tuesday, June 28th, around 25 minutes long in duration. Uh, they basically had tried to have kind of like a mini presentation about the big, th uh, big things that are expected to arrive either in the early of 2023 or by the end of this year. And I'll kind of just summarize this. Um, they basically, and I, I said this to you guys right before camera. It kind of gave me like a whole lot of nothing. I mean, I'll get—I just list off a bunch of different things that they had mentioned. Um, they had Mo Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak, which is going to be released uh, release in June 30th. The trailer looked pretty cool. Um, and, and for anyone who has played a Monster Hunter game before, I'm sure they are excited to see this have a new expansion pass. And, and me and Angelica have played a Monster Hunter game before, um, so we do like Monster Hunter. Um, this is a, a Switch exclusive since it was a Monster Hunter Rise. They also saw a expansion to near Automata, Automata, the end of your Yorha. I probably butchered that name, but comes out on to Switch October 6th. Um, they came out with another one, a puzzle game, Laurel Lorelei, the Laser Eyes, um, is, is gonna come out early 2023. They had a new teaser for a Super Bomberman R2, which was a sequel to the Bomberman game that came out on GameCube, and some cool things that came out was yeah, 15 person battles you can have a thing called a castle mode where one person is the cat the, the king of the castle and everyone needs to create defenses that defend themselves um they also came out and this is a pretty big thing for a lot of people it was all, all hyped over the internet the mega man battle network legacy collection which has come basically like a collection of 10 almost 10 games um that's uh, going to be all compiled there from the game boy advance era that's going to be on the nintendo switch uh, in 2023 um and they also added some new content to that as well we saw a trailer for a Pac-Man World Repack, which is a remaster of the Pac-Man World game. Essentially, it was a, uh, a Super Mario 3D World, but it's just Pac-Man related. Uh, we also saw Blanc, which I honestly thought this was the most interesting, and I'll talk about, we'll have that question later on, but Blanc is a co-op story similar to what Cookies and Cream was back in the PS2 era, and it's coming to 2023. It has a really cool and interesting art design. So everything's in black and white, and it follows the story between a cub wolf and a fawn and they are both separated from their families and they have to work together to find their families uh by the end of the game pretty interesting a little cute little game but actually the based on the music and stuff it had a lot of emotion behind it which is really interesting um they had another announcement return to monkey island it's a sequel to all the other monkey island games i mean i never was a big monkey island guy but i know a lot of people are so that i'm sure they got a little hyped because uh from that and it's coming out this fall Mario and Rabbits, and I think this is another really cool game coming out. Spark uh, Mario and Rabbits Sparks of Hope, the sequel to the last game, is coming out October 20th. Seems like it's going to be one of its bigger fall releases they have. Um, and then, then they announced some smaller indie titles like Railgrade, Little Noah, and RPG Time. Uh, Sonic Frontiers had a very brief uh, look in this uh, in this uh, direct. Essentially having a trailer that shows that's coming out this holiday season, which is obviously, I guess, they're going to be their big guns that they're going to go into by the holiday. Um, then they had some remasters or games coming to the Switch that they never were before, like the Persona series and the Portal series is coming to the Switch. So essentially, I, I named a bunch of stuff that was mentioned in a 25-minute period, but these trailers are all kind of really brief and short. I think the longest one they had was a Mario and Rabbids game because they had an overview of what the game is going to be like, what are some key components of the story. So the first question I have for you guys is, what do you think is the biggest positive that you saw from this mini direct? And um, and I'll let you go first, Langella Kill. What do you think was the biggest positive? Um, I'm kind of stuck on two of them. Um, I think Mario and Rabbids, um, 
is probably up there for me because you know they've had success that game series so far um it's a unique combination um when i first came out i, I wasn't too sure how it was going to go but they've done a decent job with those with you know that combination of game uh those different genres coming together and uh so that one to me is probably the most exciting and blanc like you said i think it's like a cute game i don't think it's going to be like a huge huge game but it wasn't intriguing when uh you know when i saw it so those are the two big positives for me um but the overall message i agree with you was saying earlier is um a lot of brief trailers so you know we'll, we'll get into the negatives but those are my two positives hockey i know that you just got a switch and i know you're all hyped and, and see the all the pickings you have from all these new <laughs> games coming out um what do you think is the biggest positive that you saw from this mini direct um, so I'm I'm probably most interested in Sonic. So um, I think they did show us a little bit more different gameplay than the original trailer. Um, is that correct? Right? They did. Yeah, show it was us it was like a really brief kind of like just a kind of look quick overview of it. Um, yeah, they it basically uh, they basically had like so they kind of like it had a narrator talking over it to kind of give some like feedback on what are, are some things that they should be looking for. Um, but what it tells you is that it's coming out this year. I mean, they've already made the announcements coming out again this fall. So all those people out there including myself they were like hey you know what maybe sonic would do better with not a release this year maybe you wait until it's 2023 like early 2023 or do a march you know and may, may make the game a little more fuller but they're like no it's come out this holiday season so uh, i guess that's their that's they're making the decision it's good to go yeah i, I hope uh let's let's just hope it's a, a you know a full game but uh mm -hmm. yeah the other thing that i thought blanc was cool but i feel like uh, you can't like Blanc and then hate on the cat game that PS5. <laughs> I think you gotta like both of them, <laughs> you know. Well, but listen, I'll, I'll like, and I, I, I can understand. I understand your feeling. I, I, and I'm looking at the game. I, I mean, looking at this direct, I was surprised with Blanc because when I watched the trailer, I was like, okay, this is gonna be a kid game and everything. But the music they had behind it, you really felt that emotion and it, like the little tiny compelling story between. You know, like it, it gave you that. Uh, what was the name? There was this cartoon movie between the dog and the fox, the fox and the fox and the hound, or whatever. It kind of gave off that vibe of it being like a, you know, they're they're t supposed to be like separate. You know, like you know, the fox is not supposed to be friends with the hound or whatever, and kind of gives off that vibe of like there, I got a weird feeling something bad's happened in this story, and they're kind of letting it be like a little all cute, like. I don't know, guys. Like, I don't know the story and all, but I have a bad feeling the Wolf family might have eaten the uh, the Fawns family or something, and and like something bad might have happened to them, and something like that. Like, it, I feel like one of those conundrums where it's like something bad occurred, and the emotional like the the things they pour out into this game seem really like interesting. And as a game, as a you know, seeing being a part of like a, a first per, per, a first person shooter or other genres that are like darker, I'm like. Seeing a cute game like this and then having those like really like interesting emotional like music behind it kind of got me like I got a feeling something weird happened here and it's actually interesting. Um, the art style was really cool. Um, you know, obviously I'm going to look at uh, things like Mario and Rabbits. I mean, I'm, I'm really excited to see the sequel to this game. I mean, there, this game was one of those like I, I when I first heard about the first title, um, I like uh, Mario Rabbits, uh, you know, Kingdom, uh, you know, uh, Battle, uh, Kingdom Battle or something like that. It was it was so when I first saw that announcement trailer of that game, I was like, oh God, this is going to be like a, a butcher fest. Like I didn't think this was, and I know rabbits is a popular kid like series, but I didn't like to see like Mario be like, I usually those collaborations don't work out too well. I mean, the only collaboration that I always saw was decent was the Sonic and Mario one because essentially they were like copies or, but the problem with the Mario and Sonic was it was oh. always the Olympic games and you're like, yo, can you do some sort of collaboration that Some isn't hot trash? trash? Yeah, can you not make trash. them hot trash? Like, I always thought like a good collab story collaboration would be Mario and Sonic would be like a perfect one to do. But then they came out with Mario and Rabbits, and all of a sudden it was a kind of a sleeper hit. It kind of did very well in game sales, and it did well with the story and how many people that liked it. So I'm kind of interested to see the sequel here. Um, and obviously you want Sonic to do well. So like, yeah, you know what? I hope Sonic does well. Um, but I'm a little weary. I don't know yet. I, I, I that game kind of seems like has all the potential in the world. But tell me a time, the last time Sonic had a really good game. I mean, when was the last time Sonic had like, wow, that was that was like 
that was hot like that was a great game like i haven't seen it like it's i've i've grew up watching and playing video games and i have not seen a sonic game that was like legit so prove me wrong i hope i hope that it is really good um let's go to the next question what's the biggest negative you saw i mean when i like or or if not you didn't really find any negatives what would you rather have seen from this direct i think that would be kind of the other things um you know i'll go first uh i'll say a negative and then i'll say something i wish i saw instead um a big negative for me i felt like like you know seeing pac-man i mean like the pac-man world game i i don't think anyone was sitting there clamoring for a remaster of pac-man world um and they had announced that essentially that there's also going to be a bunch of gamecube games coming to the the switch at some point and it's just like you know these remasters like i i i don't see anyone's clamoring for pac-man world remaster i don't see i rather them come out with remaster games if they're going to make any remasters games that i really want to see like on gamecube like i know that there's a lot of rumors of a legend of zelda wind waker and twilight princess i mean that would be a cool one but like don't charge me the full 60 dollars for it like don't don't do that like don't don't make that the priority remastered the big thing i wish i saw and i think everyone here might agree with me but let's just celebrate the wild too like can you give me something can you tell me that this game is doing okay do i know that this game is even like in production at this point like i, I want to see some gameplay like remember the last time they had when they had the breath of the wild one trailer they had an entire treehouse and mini in direct only on legend of zelda like they literally made me said like screw everything else let's put breath of wild as a main stage and even when that was the only that and pokemon were the only two games they showed that summer everyone was hyped for breath of the wild they saw the trailer i remember me watching trailer live i was like this is awesome like and the music behind it i was like that was like the, one of the sickest trailers i think i've seen in a while like i was hyped instantly hyped why can't you give me something like a trailer even like a cinematic trailer for breath of the wild too like give me something give me something to know like all right when is this supposed to come out i know it's not coming out this year tell me when give me a trailer to go with it like something like that because i'm hyped i want to play the game but you got to give me something uh Ligelico, what do you what did you find to be the most negative or were you like hoping to see from this that wasn't here um i have two negatives um one of them is going to sonic um and it's just kind of breaking my rule where if we're going to see a game this year, we'd have to see gameplay by the summer. And so we're about to hit July and we really haven't seen full gameplay of Sonic's uh, game that is coming out. And to me, that means if we don't see it by September, it there's going to be some red flags um, about this game because, you know, when gaming companies try to hide games up until release, it usually means that there's some flaws to it and uh you know that that's my fear uh you know them confirming that yeah sonic is coming out this year and yeah they showed us a little bit but they didn't show us much and so you know what is going to happen again if, if we don't see it by september you know major gameplay um i'm going to be nervous about this game um the second one and it's like what mars man said uh to not see a standalone triple a mario or legend of zelda breath of the wild 2 you know, you, you just these just felt like small victories for Nintendo, and and there was no big guns that are being brought to the table right now um, that I'm excited about, unfortunately. And it doesn't have to be just those two; those are just two that obviously their biggest guns are Mario and Legend of Zelda. But anything else, like you know, there's any of their main characters. We haven't seen any big AAA games that. They can even give you a cinematic that is in the works and so those are definitely my two biggest uh disappointments yeah i feel you there man uh hockey what do you think is the biggest negative or something you didn't see yeah so i'm, I'm gonna go with um you know the just the time it, I, I don't think I, I understand it was a direct mini or whatever nintendo called it uh but i definitely think it was a little bit short um Again, I'm and everyone is starting to, to know this. I'm a shooter guy, you know, I went to Elden Ring, so I am branching out, but I, I don't want to say any of the indie games were negative, just in my personal opinion, some of the things I just wouldn't play. So I don't want to keep, you know, call those negatives. Um, 
But I think something that I would want to see, obviously, Nigel Kill and Mars Man, you kind of both, you know, nailed it on the head. But I wanted to see something about the new Pokemon game, maybe some gameplay of the new Pokemon game that's going to be coming out, I think, in November. So I thought that would have been cool. Um, that's probably going to be the first Pokemon game that I do cop. So I do want to see some extra gameplay or, you know, something announced about that. Yeah, no, I feel you. And I think my biggest, like, if I was going to add anything, I think... I agree with both of you guys. Some gameplay, some stuff like on Pokemon, on Breath of the Wild, like, you know, we're falling to this thing where it's like, we're not showing gameplay. Show us the stuff we're going to buy. You know what I mean? Show us, you know, I, I'm sitting here, Mario's my favorite, you know, Nintendo character out there, and I have not seen a game, a standalone game from him in, in since Odyssey. You know what I mean? Like, that's your, that's your big gun, guys. I mean, Legend of Zelda guarantees a big gun. Pokemon guarantees a big gun. But Mario is is your dog. He's the face of your company. Like he he has not gotten a game in like close to five years. You know what I mean? Like that's that's a lot. That's a long time to not have a Mario game. And granted, you got to give Nintendo a lot of credit. They're selling consoles and games like crazy. And Mario's not even the the guy selling the most of them, right? You, you give him credit for saying, hey, you're making other good games out there. But guys, like you gotta give us a Mario game here. Like I, I'm dying for one. Um. All right, let's transition, though, to the next major thing. And we're talking about some Halo here, some Halo news. And that this is a uh, a new thing. The Co-op Insider Program and Flights have, are going to be open starting next week. And it's going to be open for people who are Halo Insiders. And all three of us were in Halo Insiders. We all were part of the Halo Infinite uh, you know, in Insider Flights. And, boy, that was a complicated and annoying and stressful process the last time we were all here, I remember we were all waiting for emails. We're like, wouldn't the, are you tell, like, I was a part of all the other insider flights and I was bugging out, like, how am I not invited? And then all of a sudden, like, I thought, like, uh, Langello Kill got an invite and I'm sitting there, like, did I not get an invite? I've been playing all these insider flights this entire time. And the hockey's sitting there, like, yo, am I the only one not getting a flight? And then he got his flight, like, delayed, like, his, his invitation got lost in the email sphere and he finally got his. So it was all, like, crazy the last time. But hey, we're back again doing it. Um, so essentially the way that this co-op is going to work, um, uh, is that everybody is going to be playing as master chief. A lot of people were saying they wish they could play as their own, uh, you know, Spartan character. If you were not the player one and have like have player one be master chief, but everyone else be their own Spartan. Like it was in reach. Uh, I mean, like I said, it feels like sometimes people are just like not happy with anything. The way that they're doing this one, it seems familiar to what it used to be in Halo's one and two. Halo three used to have it where you were the arbiter. Um, Halo 4 was the same way, and uh, Halo 5, you were all the different characters. So, essentially, they are keeping it almost consistent to the older games. Now, one thing that is different, and I, I'm not sure if this is only a flight thing, or if this is actually for the entirety of the actual co-op uh, co campaign, but for the flight, there's going to be a limit in the amount of distance that you can travel away from the main character that you're playing with. Now, the reason why that, I, that from their perspective of what this is going on, and I'll give both sides of this coin here is one perspective is the original xbox three the xbox one and the xbox one x are not as powerful enough to be able to handle further distances at least from the beginning of this test run and secondly they want to keep people in the same certain area to really test out the game as much as they can to make sure that everything works in just the basic format now granted do i think that this is going to be changed i have no idea they did not give us any information on whether this is going to be the same for every co-op game that's going to be played from here on out, or if it's just for this flight. But essentially what they're saying is that if you break that barrier, there's going to be a warning that tells you, hey, get back to your squad. And then if they don't continue to do that, or they go even further out, you'll be killed by the computer, right? They basically just wipe you out like a guardian. Um, now, kind of the interesting thing about that, and like I said, it could be because they're trying to cater to the older systems that can't handle as much compared to the newer ones. I think that's kind of, it's not a great look because essentially you're kind of bringing everyone down to that level in order for them to play co-op campaign. I think honestly, you give, you give those who are in newer consoles, the ability to do whatever the hell they want. And then those playing the older consoles, you have to stick to that range. But the downside is it's hard to manage that. If you're playing with somebody online on Xbox one, and you're playing on Series X, it's like, all right, who do you stick with? You probably have to stick with the older console, um, and that is kind of difficult. So it's, I'm wondering how they're going to handle that. I'm sure I've already heard that there's a bunch of anger about that, so I'm wondering what's going to happen from here on out with that. They also added uh, new achievements. 
They added a new mission select system, which is a, a system that was in place for all the Halo games. And now you actually be able to pick which mission start you want to start from and all that stuff. So that's kind of bringing some things that people wanted from the beginning. Um, and uh, they also said, and this was actually interesting too, was if you're playing with somebody online, whoever was the common denominator, as in like, let's just say uh, you're playing with two other people, one person's on mission one, two other people are on mission five, you're all going to start from mission one. As in, you're all going to start on the common denominator that everyone has. You're not going to like, you mission person who's on mission one won't be jumping to mission five. Like it's just trying to keep everything consistent. So and at least you can progress through the story together and it won't be changing. Um, they also stated that, uh, you know, and I, I said, all these other things are kind of just like little test runs and this is going to be coming out next week, but all your saves you have from this campaign won't carry over when it's officially released. So this is just a test run. It's very similar to what we saw with the cam uh, with the multiplayer flights. Like any unlock you had didn't carry over when the game was officially released. All that good stuff. So the big question I have um, is, you know, excitement. Are you guys excited to finally, to finally, we've been waiting for a Halo Infinite co-op campaign to release. Are you excited about it? I'll give my answer first. Yes. I mean, at the end of the day, Halo has been a game for co-op. I've been wanting to play a co-op with you guys for a long time all right and they finally are going to give us a co-op at least a test run first and then it's going to be released probably in a few weeks they already stated probably in like probably around like three weeks time they'll probably officially release after they analyze all the data and stuff i'm happy i'm happy that it's finally coming out however it's been close to six months since the game released we've all beaten the campaign we all know what happens we've all done our our deed right the question and, and obviously you lose the vigor of the excitement of playing with your friends and your family at the start of the game versus playing it a second time through. And that is something that I can definitely agree with a lot of people. Um, and my biggest, my biggest flack against that is just like, this, this should have been done a long time ago. Now, granted, I don't, I was, I'm not at three for three. I can't tell you what happens behind the scenes, but what it tells me is that Sean Lee or sorry, Chris Lee, uh, who is the former head of three for uh, or former head of Halo Infinite, clearly did something wrong and he promised way too many things that were not going to happen and officially when he walked away was because he couldn't he couldn't master any of those things that he had made promised um langella kill are you excited for this co-op campaign i know you're one of the people that was really big in the co-op campaign as well um not i'm not particularly excited anymore um and it's unfortunate because i was excited and i talked about this a bunch of times but it just felt like it's taken so long um, to get to this point. Um, and like you said, you know, we've pretty much beaten <laughs> the the adventure. And I'm going to do it. I'm going to play. Um, but it just feels like, is 343 three actually going to hit this in three weeks? Uh, like, they have not one time, not once, that I can recall that they've landed on a deadline um, since this game has been out. And so even I'm skeptical of this will be out in three weeks. Um, you know, I, I do think the flight will happen next week, but I could see this going into August. And then we're talking about, again, half a year plus uh, later from launch that this this is released. And it just goes back to that message that we've talked about on multiple episodes about, you know, them trying to catch up, 343 trying to catch up, get ahead um of the delays that they have been behind and uh you know i'll play it um I, i'm sure there'll be some good aspects of it you know if, if this is what's causing the issue it just feels like you know when you were saying how they can't go too far apart from each other then like when this game was, was released they must have had nothing done with co-op right yeah. like nothing um because like it feels like that decision should have been made a long time ago that hey, you have to stay close to each other. And there have been other open world-esque type co-ops that have been like that. Um, so it's not the most unusual thing. But, you know, it just feels like if you took this long, you would think that, hey, we would get that, that we can explore the entire map um, on our own pretty much. But Well, this is well, this is the problem. I mean, like, and I'll say from, I'm not, I'll play devil's advocate here. Generally, what I saw, what the issue was, and this has come from the developers themselves, is that they made the decision to either, one, when you play co-op and we play we we played every single halo game with co-op before most of the time when you play co-op the second player usually gets teleported yep. close to the main character right that's always been the thing 
They wanted to make it so that you can travel farther away and that caused them to do a lot more harder work, right? And on top of that, the promise that was made to keep all the Halo games consistent to all platforms was also a crutch that they had to meet because of the fact that Xbox One can't handle the same I, stuff I, as Series listen, X. Listen, I hear what do. you're saying, but just think about we're six months later and they've come to the same answer that they've had before. You know now, what I mean? So what the, exactly? But here's the, my question, though. You know, that's my, the problem, right? Is that gap from you knew the answer back then. Now you went spent six months just to get to back to the same answer. You know what I mean? So it's just like, you know, w that means at the time of release, not only was co-op not ready, it felt like co-op wasn't even on the radar at this point. Well, listen, we, we don't know that for sure. But one thing else I'll say is I think the big question, and this is their fault too, of 3 for 3, is you're overzealous in some things that you're saying. Like, if you're going to make it so that you can go anywhere on the map anytime you want, that's a big, that's a, that's a tough thing to do, right? On a game console that is Xbox One. Like, that's a tough thing to do, guys. So if you can't do that really realistically in a short span of time, then do the easy route. Just be like, listen, we've all done, we've all like teleported our allies next to us, right? And all the other campaigns, that's, keep it consistent, right? Just do it, do it that way. If that means that the game campaign co-op would have come out quicker or at launch, because I, as much as we say, like, yeah, maybe there was on the radar. I don't know if it was. I, I think it was, but I just felt like they were trying to do too much, and it was way too long that they could have taken to make it the way they wanted to. Like, yeah, if it, but they if had it to means, start back at practically ground zero. No, no but, uh, but we don't know. Close. But, this wasn't well, close to being done. What I'll tell you, more. what I'm saying is, is that if this game, after all the crap that would happen behind the scenes based on what we're hearing, these are all rumors, right? If everything like that happened, the game is in development for two years. The biggest problem was that at a certain point in that two-year span, they decided that they were going to make this co-op so that you can travel anywhere you want at any time. And it's a great idea and all, but if it means that this game co-op wouldn't have been would have been released at launch rather than six months later, then I think the decision is easy. Make it so that you teleport next to somebody else so it do, it's done faster. Even if it wasn't done like six months in, it was done three months in, that's way better than having it in six months right having it three months and or having it at launch is way better than the other way around and i think that's the uh, that's the biggest problem i saw was that they're overzealous and the before leadership the prior leadership was was not was was overzealous and they didn't meet anything what he was saying and under his leadership based on rumors this game would have been a hero shooter so i mean at the end of the day we don't know what the hell was going on behind the scenes we're only going off a of base of what people are saying like like rumors and stuff so like i said i'm not sure if it was be because they they started way too late in the thinking process of this or this the, they had to redo the entire thing and all of a sudden now they're like all right well let's go over the top with can with co-op to make it really cool but the negative is it's going to take longer for us to do or even on top of that there's a lot of people that they need to fill roles of people that are gone and what they're asking for is more than just a smaller working of group of people. Like right now, it seems like 3 for 3 needs a, needs this company needs to be bigger, to be a live service. Like Epic Games for Fortnite is massive, which is why a live service game is a lot easier to do because you have more people on deck. 3 for 3 is not sizable to that degree. As in, they need to be bigger in order to be live service because yeah, live service sounds great, but if you don't have the manpower there, then you can't do it, right? And that's kind of what this seems like to me too. Uh, Haki, we kind of missed your... Are you excited for this? And, you know, and I'll kind of tag on to this extra thing. If you are excited, you know, or, or maybe if you're not excited, what concerns do you have about this thing? Yeah, so, um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm in agreement with both you guys. I mean, I think, and again, I think we're all in agreement here that um, Halo Infinite did not come out as a full game. You know, I'm not going to sugarcoat it, right? Halo comes out with Forge, you know, I know uh, Halo 5 didn't come out with big team battle right away but um this just didn't feel like a full halo game almost a third of a halo game because yes it had the great multiplayer it did have a campaign or i'll say uh you know uh you know half the game at least because co-op usually comes out and forge is usually right around the corner not months months in advance so um am i excited for co-op uh i will be more excited once there's an expansion on the story 
Um, again, we've played the story. Um, it, it was a good story. I, I did like the campaign. I will definitely play it, um, you know, with you guys. Um, I would say my excitement is like a 7 out of 10, though. It'll be much higher once there's a new expansion, though. No, I feel you. And at the end of the day, I think that's kind of builds on what we said. Like, I'm excited to play it because I haven't we haven't played a co-op Halo game in a while, in, in some time. You know, it's been since Halo Halo 5. And I think the big thing for me is that it's unfortunate because the excitement that comes with co-op... <coughs> Jeez. Um, the co excitement that comes with co-op is when you're experiencing everything for the first time together, right? And if you're not doing that, then you lose some of that excitement because this is the second time around. So we already know what happens in the game. And Who everything. wants to so, bet before or after Aug the start of August this comes out? It's going to be August. It's going to be start of August that it comes out. I think they announced that. It's going to be probably the start of August when it comes out. Yeah, um, so it's another month. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so it's going to take several weeks for this the thing to get finalized. Because next week it starts the flights. Then it's going to take them another two weeks, two and a half weeks to get it done. And then they're going to release it. Um, they better have a good base for it. That's all I'm saying. Because if the flights uh -huh. don't work, or if there's a big problem in the flights, and they got to go back to the drawing well, that's board. The, well, that, listen, that's the that's point the of the lead. flights. That's the whole point of it, right? Uh, you want to no. test this thing. Like, I mean, that, uh, my whole thing is this. Like, if they, te if they test it, and there's a major problem, then they're going to need to take that, those extra weeks to get it done. Now, one thing I'll say is, and kind of the building on to this, I kind of want to get your opinions about, um, you know, any concerns you guys have about what I just mentioned with all these different things that go with co-op i mean the only issue i have and this could be a quick little question because we kind of talked about it already what the issue i had was about the distance thing i mean i i, I kind of want to see a you know how, like how much and they did give official number but it's hard to really tell based on like speaking it versus in game because like i don't know like 300 meters like i i'm, I'm just giving a round number i think like 300 meters like that's a decent distance in a video game but like you really have to see in playing to see how much distance that is because if it's not far like i don't think that would be the case i don't think they would make it like you have to be like right next to each other because that would be pretty bad because then you're kind of like that's a really difficult thing to do keeping all everyone right next to each other in a in a shooter like that but i think it's going to be like 300 meters probably which is not too far off but i kind of want to see how, what it's like so that was the only thing i saw that was a little concerning was like distance and I want to see whether or not this will be changed when the game, when the co-op officially releases or not. Um, and so and I'll tell you, Halo fans are mixed. I, I really watched a bunch of content creators give their opinions about what they read. Some people who I never imagined would be excited were like, this is awesome. I can, I'm glad they implemented that system. And then some people were like, I'm kind of a little bummed out because I want to, there's a mission where it's like, you know, there's a mission in the game. It's not, there's not spoilers or anything, but there's a mission in the game where there's three towers you have to, you know, four, three or four towers that you have to go across the map to like open up. And a cool idea would have been like, all right, you know what? You take a few, you, few Marines, you go over there to that tower. I'll go with a few Marines to go to this tower. And then uh, the other Spartan go to that tower. And then we'll meet up at tower four, like a mission that was in Halo 3. Like do that type of thing. That would be interesting. But like, I, I that'd be, that'd be crazy if they were to pull that off. You can just go anywhere you want. Um, because that, that's kind of like the exciting thing to make it different. Um, Haki, do you have any concerns about anything I mentioned about what is included in this co-op campaign? Yeah. So, I mean, uh, yeah, the, the biggest thing is the distance, right? I mean, mm -hmm. like you mentioned, and I was going to mention before, um, you know, all the other Halo games, one, you know, one guy goes up the lift and the guy, the other guy misses the lift and then bang, you're teleported right next to the, the main, uh, you know, the main co-op guy. So, um, you know, it's just the distance. They, they shouldn't kill you. I think that's weird. I think they should just teleport you. And I, and I hope it is a good distance because, you know, one guy, uh, you know, engages a group of elites or whatever, and the other guy is 200 yards away or 300 yards away with a sniper covering you. And then you go 200 you know, and one yard or 301 yard and then bang, you're teleported right in front of the elites when you were supposed to be sniping, you know. Or so, worse, you get killed. I mean, yeah, you get killed with a yeah. sniper. Um, yeah. Or right into a sword, you know, like, so that, you know, there should be, it should be a long distance if it's going to be that, you know. Uh, and Joe Kill, what are your concerns? Yeah, I mean, it's the same one. And, and you know, I mentioned this before, um, executing this launch uh, for co-op. You know, you said it's pretty much guaranteed it's going to go into August, um, and that's if it stays on time. So, 
you know, when this officially gets released is going to be the big question. And hopefully the flight next week goes by pretty smoothly, because if not, then it'll be delayed even longer and probably into September. Let's just hope that all three of us are on, uh, get that invite. I mean, that'd be great. Imagine only one of us get the, uh, say it again. You play three player co-op now, right? Yeah, yeah, you can. You can play all four. You can play four player co-op in this game. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what's interesting is they have it separate from the Halo Infinite title. So it's like they ha they basically just made a build of the game and put it on that insider flight program, like that same app that we had originally. Um, and they're basically going to have it on there. And so you, oh, now the only good thing about it though, is if you download it now, guys, you download that app. Now we all have access to it. All they do is just add the update and then they say, all right, download this update and you're good. Right. If, well, before, before when we were all waiting to get the invite to get that thing was incredibly difficult, right? That was the impossible thing. And th I don't think that's, that's going to happen again, because I think there'll be more prepared for that type of flight process. So we'll find out. Um, but next thing, and I'll be very brief with this next part. It's also another Halo topic here. Um, so there are a lot of rumors coming out about season three of Halo Infinite. Um, and also some things are going to come out for Halo's future. And like I said, these are all rumors. So take them with a grain of salt. Um, but essentially, Halo uh, season three seems to be almost like the re-release of the game, essentially, especially for the multiplayer component, where they're going to be updating the ranking system. They're going to be updating, uh, you know, getting a lot of armors that were cut or left out from season one like halo reach armors that were supposed to be in season one but they had to cut them either because of you know glitches that were having issues with or just i I'm, they maybe they want they, they felt too too like oh you know what they're getting too many good content maybe i cut this down or something or something like that i don't know but they said they're going to be releasing more of these things uh, a lot of rumors are showing them more often in the data mining that's been happening they've also announced that there's going to be probably cross customization um, that's going to be going along with uh, Season 3, where there's going to be armors that can be now customized on multiple different tiers. So instead of you always just having the samurai armor only on samurai cores, you can now have some samurai on your other cores that make it more diversify, um, as well as having a military progression system. So it's like, just like the old Halo games where you can like rank up, oh, I'm the sergeant, but I'm also progressing through this battle pass. So it's like, you have two separate progression systems. So if you don't want to buy the battle pass, you just have a rank system. That's like Halo Reach in, in, in essence. Um, and Forge will be releasing in September. Generally, it's supposed to be the start of September. And they already have announced that at these new monthly updates or, or content drops, there will be new maps that will be added. Like Guardian seems like the most rumored one as the first monthly drop that's supposed to happen this month. Um, now, the big question I have for you guys is, do you think Halo Infinite has what it takes to mount a comeback and what do you think it needs to do to mount a comeback so langel kill let's just start first here what do you think they need to do to make a comeback of halo infinite because we've seen it happen before with a lot of other games as well well i think the number one thing is hitting on their deadlines that's probably the number one thing uh, a lot of things that you said rumors um sound all good and and i think would help halo infinite um, how much does it bring back i'm not sure um it, it really but there's two things that they really need to do and number one is hit on their deadline so when they say it's september it's got to come out in september it cannot be delayed uh, a few weeks delayed a month you know like they just need to get ahead of the curve and, and that's really where it comes to and it probably starts with them building the team up um and that's not gonna, that's not a quick fix. So there is, you know, that's the number one thing, in my opinion. The number two thing, um, and you mentioned it as one of their rumors, right, is the monthly content drops, right? So if you're going to be live service or at least be as close to a live service as you can, you know, Halo needs that constant infusion um, to bring people to the table and to keep them entertained. And they can't go these long... Uh, months um, just because of how far behind that they were you know if they had a more complete game it wouldn't be this bad um, but they need those kind of infusions of of content and material um, that is going to keep people coming back and this game is being played um, it's not dead in the water but it, it's not it's not where it should be I think we can all come to agreement on that that you know Halo should be um, one of the most talked and one of the most played games in gaming 
Um, and, and that's the that's the upsetting part is that it's being played. It's just it's not to the standards that we hold the Halo franchise name to. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. Um, Haki, do you think this game has a chance of a comeback and what does it need to do to get there? Yeah, so again, the core of the game uh, is good, right? The, the the mechanical gameplay is good. Weapons are good, you know, the trifecta you always talk about, you know, the, the melee, the grenade, and the guns, right? All that stuff is mechanically good. It's a good game, but like Angelic Hill said, it is lacking uh, content, obviously from the start. Um, and I'm the one that's got to feel the worst because remember when we did the Halo thing? I got this number three. <laughs> Stop playing around, dog. Like, I had this three. Halo one. So uh, it needs to. And I, what I said, you know, when we had done that was hey, listen, it has the potential. It really yes. Yeah, you projected. It was a projection. It's a gross, but, and listen, I mean, I, I'm giving it. I gave it a. I gave it what a nine. Uh, what was that a nine three? Right. I think I gave this yeah, yeah. game. You know, I I also was doing it in the same light. I put it in my number four game, so it wasn't like it was that far off. And I had it above Reach, and Reach is a complete game compared to this. So, yeah, I agree. Listen, I completely understand this game projection wise. Well, I think we rated it based on projection, and if you're really looking at it, this game probably fits right around where Metacritic has it as an 88, 87. Like, it's a game that is a good game. Like, an 88 on a Metacritic is a good score. Good. That's that's yeah. a Horizon Forbidden West. It's a good game. It's just there should be more to this game, and that's why I kind of and I'll I'll give my answer. Hockey, you go with your answer. You finished with yours. Uh, so, so what, what I was gonna say was uh, yeah, yeah, sorry. They need to add. Yeah, no problem. Is um like angelico said they gotta hit the deadlines but they need to add as quickly as possible and get it down uh obviously forge because the community is only going to help right the community is only going to help this game get better and stay better so forge and then i've always been like from the start uh, i've been ripping battle royale if they can skill a battle royale and it can come out within the next six to eight months or whenever it's supposed to come out uh if they can do that it it really turns this game uh, yeah that's a good point you know, it, it'll turn this game into a top three Halo game of all time. But, uh, I don't know about that one, but <laughs> well, the Battle see, Royale. Well, listen, this is, I know yeah. I agree with the Battle Royale. Like that is kind of like an adrenaline shot, um, because they need to do something. Yeah, they need to do something, and, and the Battle Royale could be an adrenaline shot. Yeah, so that, that I mean, that's why I had it in three. So if they can do it, it might be the top three. <laughs> yeah, listen, I and I made this. I made my point about what Hit Nail needs to do to make a comeback, and back in the is Halo dying video. I made that a long time ago, like several months ago. I made that video and I said, this is exactly what Halo Infinite needs to do to kind of rebound from this not so great launch. And, you know, essentially the biggest problem they have is content, right? The amount of things they have available for you to unlock as well as for you to play. And that is something that they still are struggling with. And so if you fix Forge and you make it come out as soon as possible, and I know right now, they already have insider flights for people who are like big on on Forge who already know what they're doing. They already are testing this thing out and they're playing it. And there've already been leaks. They've shown like some crazy ass things. Like they straight up are making Half Life gravity guns with Sentinel beams. Like they, these things like grab stuff and shoot them like shooting barrels and stuff like actual weapons. And you're like, dude, you can do that with Forge. There's so many things you could do with Forge. Like that's insane. Like can you have this thing released or? Take the maps and game modes that they make as flights and make sure that they work and put them out to the public. Because I can guarantee you, you make a post and say, hey, this map was made by the Forge community behind the scenes. People would be hyped. Be saying, this is a Forge map and this is what it looks like. That's awesome. And they'd be excited to play and they'll say, give me Forge. And once Forge comes out, all of a sudden the floodgates are open and now the community can do the back, the, all the hard work of making maps cons consistently and all the game modes consistently, they'll have it done for you. I mean, that's the best part about Forge. You basically take away a lot of the work that the devs have to do and give it to the community and say, hey, you guys do it. We'll focus on some other stuff. Now, I think the biggest thing that will get people hyped is Forge, but I, I can agree with Aki. Like, you know, a battle royale will get a lot of people bring going to Halo to te at least test out this, ba th this battle royale. And if they land on it, like they do a good job with the battle royale and make it different and you know make it interesting for Halo, then people will stick around and keep playing it. You know what I mean? Like I think 
battle royales is like a genre of games that people like to watch streamed. They like to play. They like to see like someone else do it. And if you make a good one that's interesting, that's different than what Apex Legends is giving you or Fortnite's giving you, and you know, like what did Fortnite do? And all of a sudden, everyone came running back. They took away building. Like that. That's as simple as it did. They said no building. Everyone used guns, and all of a sudden, everyone said, "All right, let's go try out Fortnite." Like if you make a battle royale that's that's interesting for Halo and it's different than Fortnite and Apex, people are going to go play it. They're going to go try it out, and if it's good, then you're going to get a lot of people trying it out, a lot of people playing it consistently. And that's going to bring... As much as people don't like, like, oh, the Battle Royale scene only brings in, like, eight-year-olds. Like, guess what? That's more people to the game, and that's more excitement to the game that means more investment. Like, and that's kind of the big thing that Microsoft needs to realize. And this is something that I'll add on as a brand-new rumor was that apparently Microsoft is kind of tie, is kind of tying the hands of three for three on a lot of these things like microtransactions in the store. And it kind of makes sense because you can see that a lot of developers are kind of like, you kind of need to make your voices heard more often. Like there's like a lot of these cryptic things they saying on Twitter, like keep telling us that you're upset with the store. Keep saying it to the point where it's like almost like them saying like, we can't really control this to a certain degree. If you guys keep saying that this is un, un, like unfair and you're angry about it, then the Microsoft, whoever is leading this charge of having a store and having these outrageous prices will be forced to say, all right, let's 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 make some adjustments here. I don't know how much of that is true. All I can tell you is that I've watched all these cryptic things about it. And I'm like, it kind of seems like a thing because 3 for 3 like needs all the fan support they need. Like, And what, they're going to now make everyone pay for all the little things? Like... That just is anti-productive for their sake. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I, I could be wrong. They could be just money grubbing just like everybody else. Who knows? Um, Let's jump to the something else. Now, we've been talking about Halo a lot. This will be a brief one. Madden 23 came out with their beta, uh, with their beta and uh, one of my colleagues at the Vendetta Sports Media had played the beta and tested it out and see what he thought. Um, I, I won't talk about every single thing he said, but uh, Scott Lagush, uh, I'll give you all the credit here for this, but... Essentially, he states, you know, defense got a little boost, gang tackles, the, you know, the second person jumping in causes fumbles. That was kind of in the older game, so that was kind of a thing. Um, field sense, which is basically where you can lead people when passing. That was an old Madden thing that seems like they said it looks like it's doing well again. That's great, but it's an old Madden trick that they added to the game a long time ago, back in 2010, I think, or 2008. Um, Franchise mode is getting some adjustments, but some things are kind of off. Like, for example, things like when you're scouting, all the positions are all combined together. Like, instead of you looking for, like, a left outside linebacker, you're, like, outside linebacker in general. And you're like, well, that's just counterproductive because you're taking away more of the sophisticated, you know, things that go behind scouting and stuff like that. But now you're making it, like, more streamlined. But it's not, like, if you're an analytical guy... You're not really looking for that. You want to see people who are specific types of players when you're scouting. Same thing with safeties. They just put safety as, a, as an entire position rather than a strong safety versus a free safety. And you're like, why? What's the point of doing that? That we've all, if you're a football fan or a football player, coach, you know that there's a separate, there's a separation between types of safeties out there. Same thing with offensive tackles. This guy's a left tackle or a right tackle. They combine them together. Um, now, what they also said was that they have things, things called player roles, which is essentially the same thing as it used to be back in decades ago. So, what I told you here was nothing too crazy that Madden does. Madden is well known for taking old mechanics that were in the game decades ago and saying, look, I added something to my game. Please applaud me for doing something that is classic. Or bringing in, though they say it's a new feature, but it's a thing that's been in the game for a decade. Like, that's what the, a lot of these things sound like. And I can almost guarantee you, all of you guys are going to say the same thing. I, I would ask you guys, appealing. Is this appealing to you? And to me, no. It's not really appealing at all. I'm not going to sit there and say, thank you, EA. Thank you for putting in things like scouting and things like player roles and leading the passer. These were things that were already in Madden 10 years ago, and now you're adding them back into the game, and now you're asking me to, to pay you $70 for this title. Like, I'm, I'm not. I'm physically not going to do it. As much as I've been swindled into paying money for Call of Duty, 
Like, I'm not swindled into paying money to Madden. I'm not doing it. Um, so I don't know about you guys. Haki, are you going to go buy this game based on this beta? Okay. <laughs> well, listen, you know, shout out to Vendetta Sports Media. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, man. I'm not going to spend. Uh, I can't do sixty dollars or seventy. It's seventy dollars now, right? Yep. I mean, I can't do seventy dollars. Not, not on a man game for me. It's copy and paste. Um, it's just not my cup of tea. I'm not going to spend seventy bucks on it. Yeah, uh, Angelico, you buying this game? You know, you you mentioned Madden's uh, EA's talent of taking features out of Madden games and then years later putting them back in and calling it a new feature. Um, you know, I, I just think there's there's a big gaming community of in sports gaming, and they really should ask for better. I mean, like, this is just, it's pathetic. They're putting Madden on the cover, you know, and, and pretending that, you know, they're putting in some extra work for him because uh, he passed away and stuff like that. And it's a joke. It's just a straight up, it's a straight up joke. And, you know, this is really the worst of gaming, in my opinion. The, the sports games with 2K with basketball, Madden, uh, EA with Madden. This is really like the worst of gaming. And they kind of set the standard for that is leaking into the other games about this, all, all this, the, the worst parts about gaming. And I recommend people not buy it. Um, I know they will. Madden is one of the most high selling games ever. They make hundreds of millions of dollars every year off of Madden. Um, and it's just, it's like a crime. It, it really feels like a damn Ponzi scheme um, that, that, that EA does. So no, I'm not buying it. Yeah, I'm not buying it. So I'm not, not doing it. I'm not feeding into this, this, this no. crime. And, and they should ask better. I mean, like, stop being zombies, you Madden fans. Stop being zombies. Like, this is pathetic. Um, they don't do anything. They can't even have the time to separate tackles and safeties and linebackers in, in franchise mode. Like, it's it's pathetic. They're giving you bare minimum effort. It's pathetic. Yeah, and I agree. More. Yeah, and you're paying seventy dollars for this thing. You're paying seventy dollars, and I know the, the the that at some point I'm sure gaming games will become seventy dollars as a as a baseline. But right yeah. now that they aren't, they aren't right now. The only like, one selling you seventy, they are becoming seventy. Like I, I just like, like Madden, you know, but the, they don't put in effort. They don't put in effort. Like I actually, I prefer to spend seventy dollars on a Call of Duty game than on Madden. That's where we're at. Like Vanguard, I'd rather pay and play Vanguard for hours besides Madden. That's yeah. where we are. That's like, where I, we are. At least I know Call of Duty, if they copy and paste something, they're going to copy and paste the game that, like, Modern Warfare. They copy and paste Modern Warfare, and they put that as a copy and paste for World War II. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Like, I actually like Modern Warfare. So, like, I actually would play that game for a decent amount of time. And I, I'd actually be like, you know what? I'll, I'll play a few days, and then I'll probably be like, this is trash, and I'll just stop playing it. But Madden, like... The instant I buy that game, I'll try it and be like, this is the same game that's been played six years plus in a row. Like, it's yeah. the same game, and it's, like, tiring. You're like, I just spent $70 on a game that, like, is the same. I could go play the older one and maybe get an updated roster and, like, that, you know, they I could, I could create a player. Yeah. That's what you guys should do. Get updated rosters in your old teams. Go do You're it. Playing the same game. Same game. Yeah, you might not get the rookie class, but I think you can actually import it. So I mean, like, and you can even cool in worst case create a player, create the starting players no, added, no, and just add them. certain number of players. They don't allow you to create, you know, because Crazy. they're they're just you know. Crazy. Um, let's jump to this next quick one. I just wanted to kind of give a shout out here. I gotta give Bungie a lot of credit. Um, this is a tough thing to do. Now, Bungie, now granted, Bungie is not the same Bungie that made the Halo games. There's a lot of people are gone from that company since the original founding of it, for sure. Um, but I got to give Bungie a lot of credit. Those are the guys, the OG company that made the original Halo games. And they basically had used their full boat to go after uh, basically a cheater website, a, a site that basically makes uh, cheating software to go after, basically to help people cheat and win in online games. Um, and basically like they they also kind of worked alongside this other group that was using like a, a, um, DYMCA 
uh, you know, copyright, uh, trying to copyright their own material and trying to like go after smaller groups and stuff. So Bungie basically sued them and won in their lawsuit for thirteen and a half million dollars. And essentially, I think, you know, they, uh, you know, like I said, they sued them. They they found out they were making illegal like cheating, you know, hacks and things things like that. That they essentially were, you know, helping players win in their online matches. And this is just not just for Bungie, but for other gaming companies as well. Um, and I kind of like, you know, I'm just going to give them a shout out. I think it's, it's, it's kind of a smart move to go after companies like this to say, you know, what you're doing is wrong for the gaming community. And, and, you know, we see this happen quite often. Like sometimes I'm sitting there like, and I actually happened one time in Halo. I think we were all playing the game together and I was sitting there like this dude, we're playing against a guy and every shot he hit with like a shock rifle or something was like head piecing everybody like from distance. And it was like, he had like hundred, he had like a hundred kills close. And I was like, dude. This guy literally just had 100 kills in a big team battle match, and it was like, you know, it's cheating. Like, it's like, and it's just, it's unforgivable. Like, the, the, how people can cheat and just be, like, happy. Like, oh, I'm just out here cheating. Like, the, there's no, what enjoyment is that? And so, Bungie being a big company going after a cheat, like, a, you know, with all their powerful lawyers to go after this site to shut them down and then sue them for money. I think, and I said this, uh, I'll mention to you all this right now. I think all companies should band together and just go after cheating companies entirely. Like, let's just go out all together and just take your best lawyers and take them all down. I mean, at the end of the day, this only hurts your brand. This only hurts your company. I would say YouTube and Twitch join up, join up with them because that only hurts your brand too. You, you know, they they ban kids that stream when they cheat. You know what? The best thing to do go after the companies that make the program, right? I think that'd be the best thing to do because essentially they're they're. They're going after their product. They're going after the product of streaming. They're going after the product of gaming and you're ruining it. So you should be suing them. And this might open up a precedent for everybody else. So I think that would be a great, I just want to give a shout out to Bungie and say, Hey, hell, you know, cheers to you guys. That was a great thing for you guys to do for just the, the industry of gaming as a whole. Um, I want to jump to the last topic and this is brand new guys. We're all a fan of overwatch and overwatch Two beta is open but you gotta pay forty dollars for this premium like pre-order pack that has all these cosmetics and all this stuff you can put on, you know, put on tracer and all that stuff. You know, like free to play. It's mm. yeah, it's free to play, <laughs> but if you want to beta, you gotta pay us forty smackaroos yeah. for a game that's an update. Um, and you know your boy Marsman spent the forty dollars for it, so you know. So just to give my just because I, you know, just because that's what I do here. Um, just to give everyone some insight. You pay so I, you don't have to. Yeah, I pay so that you don't have to when, uh, you know, when we want to see a preview of the game. Um, so if I'm looking at Overwatch 2 and I played some, I played a few games of it. Boy, it is it is it the same thing that we played back in the original. It, even though 5v5, it feels like the same stuff I was playing and. I'll tell you, give, give you my oversight here. There are some characters that are OP, and there are some characters that need a boost big time. They need that. They need the help, and of course, it seems like all my characters are the ones that need all the boost because, damn, the game hasn't even been out yet, and the sweaty palms are out to play, guys. Like the sweat, the sweaty pits are out to play because, damn, it was sweaty. It hasn't even been officially released. It was fun to jump back into Overwatch to get back into the, you know, the the mayhem of that game to get angry and start going wild again. But they need to make some updates to this, especially the characters, because there's some characters out there that are way too good, way too good that for their own for their own like for their own good essentially. So I want to kind of ask you guys, you know, are you excited for Overwatch Two, um, um, or, or do you think are you guys gonna be nervous about some of the changes that they made, especially the five v five? Um, hockey, you're the, you're the Overwatch expert here. Are you excited for Overwatch 2 or are you kind of a little leery, a little nervous about it? No, oh, man, I'm, I'm excited. I really am excited. I didn't know that the beta had come out, uh, for console yet. Do you know how long the beta is? Like how, like, I don't know. I have to look up the official time. Um, I gotta look up the official time, but I mean, I would like $2, be dollars. Like I, dude, I don't care about skins. I don't like a skin doesn't make you better at the game. So I don't care about the skin. So like, if I'm paying forty dollars for a week of a beta, 
I'll probably do it. But like, <laughs> I'm not, like it sucks, but I'm not, probably gonna do it. Uh, I hope, dude, if it's a couple weeks, that'd be fire. That definitely worth forty bucks. I mean, I'm gonna do it regardless. I got a download right now, so I already did do it. Um, but like, yeah, man, I'm, ex- yeah. I'm super excited. That was the game that made me stop playing Halo Five. Uh, for- so they get- <laughs> okay. So they uh, just to cut you off here, dude. So the access runs through. Okay, it runs through July 18th. Right. So that's pretty beta good. Beta runs through July 18th, giving players three weeks. You got three yeah. weeks. Yeah, that's worth to it. play. Okay, that's that's 12 bucks a week. That's that's 13 that's, bucks. That's, a week. That's, that's really that's, <laughs> that's 13 33 dollars. Oh, that's 13 dollars 33 cents a week. Oh, that's worth okay. it, your boy. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, it's the game that made me stop playing Halo Five. I was a top 500 in the in the original game, so I'm very excited. Well, I'll tell you, bro. You, you're you're gonna need your help on that one because <laughs> yeah, there's some sweaty kids out there, and it's gonna be real tough. Um, Angela Kill, I know that you're probably not looking to pay forty dollars to get access to this, but are you excited for Overwatch too? Well, if the rest of the Marsman crew is gonna be paying forty dollars, <laughs> we um, might have to <laughs> might have to donate to Overwatch too, but. Uh, you know, I'm I'm excited to play it again. It's been a very long time um, since we've had Overwatch. Um, another news is when Overwatch Two does come out, uh, Overwatch One is going to be shut down, so that won't be a playable anymore. So um, they are making push to uh, you know the free to play. If you want to wait, you have to wait till later in July, or you can spend the forty dollars now. But it feels like the same game, um, except like you mentioned, kind of like a Smash Brothers type thing where they add characters and i think that's the best route for them to go is just to continue to add a boatload of characters and make it a huge library um because no offense you know i you see the gameplay and it just feels like the same game it is the same game and i don't think there will be much changes to the type of gameplay in the game i just think that they should do what smash brothers does and create a giant library of characters um, that you can choose from. Um, but I, you know, I'm interested to see, uh, Overwatch 2 again and play it. And I'm sure it is going to be extremely sweaty and extremely toxic like the first one. <laughs> Dude, I, I can already, I can already time. feel it. <laughs> Gotten calm banned so many times for that game. <laughs> I can already feel it. I was Horrible. waiting for a message to happen when I didn't do as well in a game. And I was like, bro, I can feel the sweatiness emerging. The game, like the game and the community started off so positive and then just, I like, know. It'll be the same Dude, thing. This I, I, got, I, got a message, I got a message from a kid that was like, enjoy being banned. Then I didn't even do anything. I didn't even say anything. Or like, I got banned because I guess I didn't play as well. And I was like, what? Like, I'm going to get banned for that? I, I got, I'm going to get yeah. banned for sucking? Like, is that, is that really what the ban's for? Yeah. Like, how do you how do you submit that message to Blizzard? Like, I'm oh, can you ban this kid for not switching to a healer? Like, bro, like, that doesn't make any sense. Like, that, just stop it. Like, but... With that being said, and we gotta go jump to Overwatch 2 right now, but thank you guys for watching. Uh, you know, we had a lot of fun. We do these every single week. We cover the biggest news topics of the week, but if you like this type of content and you want to see more of it, please drop a thumbs up and subscribe for more future content and hit that notification bell to be let know when we drop a new video or we do our live streams and we do those daily. Our official schedules, Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Saturdays, but we also do have a wild card day where I pick one extra day in between to do a live stream as well. So please join us on those. They are a lot of fun, a lot of great community support and contact. So you're going to be in touch with a lot of great people um, and join us on social media, on discord and Twitter. And that is located in the description below. But with anything else, guys, this is Marsman from Marsman gaming signing off for the night. Peace out guys. <laughs>